Hi everyone, I'm Anna. I'm a product manager on Material Design where I lead Adaptivity. We adapt our design to every platform and device. This year, we've been focusing on making sure our apps look good on large screens, so I'm going to share some updates and show you what we are currently working on. I'm so excited about the new hardware we're releasing, and I'm sure you are too. We've been working on ways to help you build for tablets, foldables, and desktops. I'm sure you've been wondering how your favorite app or the app you're building will look on a larger display or a display that can change its size. Today, we want to share some things we've been working on that will help you make beautiful apps on large screens. I will give an overview of our window classes, and after that, Ryan will offer some guidance for layout and a glimpse at future design. We'll show you how this design affects Google Apps and what you as a designer or developer can aspire to to make sure your apps look amazing on any new hardware coming your way. Let's start with an overview of our window classes. Devices come in all sizes and shapes, so rather than designing for an ever-increasing number of display states, we created window width size classes to ensure layouts work across a range of devices. We defined three window width breakpoints by looking at what kinds of experiences people were having and cataloged all screens across platforms in our ecosystem. Window width size classes, or window classes for short, are a set of opinionated viewport breakpoints that help determine when a layout needs to change. For starters, devices are classified into one of these three window classes, compact, medium, or expanded, based on the device's width and whether they are in portrait or landscape orientation. This means a Pixel 7 in portrait with a width of 412 dp is considered compact. However, when it's rotated into landscape, it has a width of 892 dp. So in that orientation, it is considered expanded. The compact window class includes more narrow device widths, like phones and the front screen of a foldable and portrait orientation. Anything larger than the compact window class, meaning anything wider than your typical mobile phone held vertically, we count as large screen. Our next window class is medium. Included in this are tablets and unfolded foldables, both in portrait orientation. And lastly, we have expanded. The expanded window class captures phones in a landscape orientation, unfolded foldables, tablets, and desktops. Our talk today focuses on these medium and expanded sizes, helping you get the most out of that added large screen real estate. These days, devices aren't only scaling up to get more screen real estate for users, but are also shifting between what window class they are. Users are free to resize windows and devices, such as foldables, which can transform from compact to expand it within seconds, like opening up your Pixel Fold. A larger screen means more screen real estate. However, more real estate doesn't mean more space to pack with excessive information. We can use established print design concepts to create an easier, more engaging, and emotive reading experience employed to draw the user's attention, help them orient themselves, navigate the page, and make tasks easier to complete. Some of these principles utilize a more pronounced hierarchy through bolder typographic expression, increased scale and contrast between elements, composition tension, and emphasized wayfinding. Now, I'll focus specifically on large screens, our medium and expanded size classes. In 2011, we debuted Android Honeycomb, focused specifically on tablets. Today, we bring you an evolution in our design language for large screens going back to our roots. Material design has been informed by the principles of print design since its inception. With the latest version, Material U, these principles emerge in bolder and more vivid ways. One of the key goals of Material 3 is to encourage designers to be more expressive. With larger screens, you can draw on the powerful and dynamic techniques of large format print, like poster design, and take advantage of concepts such as tension, asymmetry, composition, and hierarchy. By leveraging these ideas, you can create visually powerful designs that convey their message. We think of large screen optimizations as part of an adaptive design, well formatted for larger displays. If you're starting from mobile, we want to help you set up your space on a large screen. To make apps unique and differentiated, you should utilize design practices like layout and expression. Now, here's Ryan to talk about some best practices to take advantage of on large screen UIs and some past concepts that are informing our future. Thanks, Anna. Hey, everyone. I'm Ryan. I'm a design lead on Material. Anna introduced you to our three window classes. Now, let's start by breaking down the anatomy of the screen. There are two key parts to consider in setting up an adaptive layout, navigation and body regions. The navigation region holds your primary navigation components. This includes the navigation bar, rail, and drawer. Using the best navigation component from Material balances design and ergonomics. 
It's how you meet user expectations without overextending the component beyond its intended design. Here are our top recommendations. Use the navigation bar for compact window classes, navigation rail on medium, neither navigation rail or standard navigation drawer on expanded. If additional navigation is required, a modal navigation drawer can provide support. Now that you have your navigation component, let's look at the body region. The body region is grouped into one or more panes and contains most of the content in an app. In the compact window class, we recommend one pane. For medium window classes, we recommend using one or two panes to organize content. Our research shows that one pane is usually what users prefer. However, for low density apps, like Android settings, for example, two panes might work best for users. For expanded window classes, like a tablet in landscape mode or a desktop, two panes are a great way to make functional use of that extra space. It's also useful to keep in mind for phones in landscape orientation, which are also in the expanded window class. It's common for apps to lock a layout to portrait mode on mobile phones, but it's simple and worthwhile to incorporate the landscape mobile adaptation. If a user wants to lock the display to portrait, they can disable system auto-rotate, but it's best to give them the choice. Paints can help you organize your content and create explicit scaffolding for components. They can be fixed or flexible. They hold persistent components, like top app bar and search bar, and more context-specific components, like images, text, lists, cards, and buttons. Content in a pane can be aligned and displayed in multiple columns. Columns are exclusive to a pane, and they're not used at the window level, giving you more granular control of a layout within a pane. Lastly, some hardware considerations. With folding hardware, a display hinge distinctly segments the screen into two halves. Some devices, like the Surface Duo, do not have display hardware in this region, so the screen will operate as two distinct panes. When unfolding a foldable, an app will transition from the front screen to the unfolded screen automatically. Display cutouts, such as for a front-facing camera, might obstruct some of your design. In these scenarios, you should offset the body region to make sure no part of the UI is obscured. Now that we've covered what you can do to get started, we'd like to give you a little preview of what we have planned for our Google Apps on large screen in the next few years. This is a continuation of Material 3's design language, grounded in our principles, expressive, spirited, and personal. And while these ideas are still a work in progress, it's been exhilarating to see a fresh wave of ideas coming from design teams all over Google that continue, enhance, and evolve the direction we started with M3. Here's a sneak peek at what people are making to keep the excitement building. Starting with Expressive, my favorite. Large screens are a moment to bring that bold expressiveness that a smaller device doesn't have the space for. Icons that are reactive underneath your finger, built on material symbols. Expanding the canvas size allows for a broader range of typographic expression, and when combined with variable fonts, facilitates smooth transitions between wide to narrow or thin to extra bold states, dynamically adapting to changing layouts and panes. Rather than centering icons inside a button, offsetting them can draw attention to a particular action, like page navigation. A screen with a greater range of expression, quiet when extra focus is needed, or loud when you want to turn up the volume. The next focus was creating a spirited UI. Shape is one of the most iconic and extensive aspects of M3's visual language. Shapes in motion can add emotion, feel fun, and add a liveliness to the UI. They can make a product feel far more human and live and engaging. Shape transitions, particularly when changing the relative size of components or applying a unique shape, can communicate the change in hierarchy of the UI and draw the user's attention to the important element effectively. Shapes can accentuate UI responses in unique ways, delivering a spirited feeling and aliveness. Lastly, with the larger screen, we wanted to make the UI more personal and tailor-made. Enlarging tap targets, like these in-call buttons, giving them a little more space 
to separate their functions, adjusting a pane to create a more focused workspace, or pinch zooming for a little more intimate conversation with a friend. A malleable UI allows users to customize their environment. And here, ergonomic placement of controls, right where you're holding your device, right where you're typing, and flexibility for a user to remake the UI to fit their needs. Thank you for listening in. We hope you'll take away a little bit of inspiration on where we're going and take advantage of new ways to build for large screens. We're so excited for this continuation of M3 Design, and I hope you all are too. Earlier this year, we made a big update to our layout guidelines on material.io. If you haven't been back recently, you can check them out at goo.gle slash material dash layout. And be sure to check out the What's New in Material Design talk to learn what else we've been up to. Thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm.